Hey, what is up, Omni Athletes? If you have not registered yet for the 2019 Future of Sport Conference, do it today. Go to live.theomniathlete.com. This conference is truly going to transform the way you look at sport, the way you compete in sport. And if you are a coach or a leader who's working to bring sports consciousness into your team, into your organization, into your client base, whoever it is that you serve, and you need help building that bridge in translating the practices of higher consciousness, the practices of meditation, mindfulness, EFT, training principles around energetics and embodiment, and how that all translates into athletic performance and in a way that you can communicate its value, and by extension, the value you deliver in being able to to bring that work to sport and to the world, this is the conference for you to be at. We are gonna have an incredible list of speakers and teachers that all have gone through the journey of translating that work, that value, that power into athletic performance and into peak performance for sport, for life, through movement. So be there July 19th through 21st in San Francisco, the Future of Sport Conference. Go to live.theomniathlete.com to register today. Grab your ticket. We'll see you guys in San Francisco. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Omni Athlete. We created this show and company to empower your performance with the wisdom and techniques of the world's highest achieving body, mind, and spirit competitors. Okay, so today's guest is a sought-after speaker, award-winning humanitarian, two-time national best-selling author, world-renowned thought leader, and the CEO of one of the world's leading sports and entertainment marketing agencies, which he co-founded with Hall of Fame quarterback Warren Moon. He's been named a top 10 keynote speaker by Forbes and has been profiled by top media outlets like Entrepreneur, ESPN, Bloomberg, Yahoo, and SB Nation. Although listing out all of his accomplishments and accolades would literally take pages, what makes today's guest such an innovative and profound force in the world of sports is the story of redemption, authentic resonance, and gratitude that he applies to bringing out the latent human potential in everyone he comes in contact with. It's my pleasure to introduce to Omni Athlete, the man who's on a mission to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun, Dave Meltzer. Welcome to the show, Dave. Oh my gosh. I, I have to have that sent to me. That's the best introduction. Tom Bill, you and you now are up there. I got to have a copy of that. You have over, you know, I always say you're never as good as they say you are. You're never as bad. So anyone listening out there, I'm not that good. But that's a great introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Dave, thank you for being on the show. This is, uh, you bring a really interesting perspective to this conversation of not just athletic performance, but consciousness. And I think one of the places that I really wanted to start is you've been both as an athlete and working with athletes, you've been able to see the energy that athletes bring to their performance and how they vibrate when they're performing, especially in the zone at those high states. What have been maybe some of the key takeaways you've observed when you see athletes performing at that level? And how does that map to the rest of their life? Yeah. So the biggest enlightenment that I've had is understanding one, the conscious of what athletes think, say, and do, the subconscious of what they believe, and then a certain unconscious competency of genetics, their personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions, as well as their unconscious energy that they, they possess as well. And the fluency between those of uh, being able to expand, accelerate, and grow right? Three crucial components of being successful at whatever you want to do comes from this passion or or enjoyment of a consistent every day, a persistent will not quit pursuit of their potential. And that is the formula in which I have derived from being around a spirit of excellence, the greatest football, baseball, basketball, boxers in the world, as well as thought leaders and CEOs. In fact, you know, on my podcast, The Playbook, that was the whole purpose of the platform was to bring the spirit of excellence and not ask about their achievements, but simply their playbook to success. I wanted to know the similarities of the consistent, persistent pursuit of their potential and how the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious has been able to expand, grow, and accelerate so that people can get what they want faster and more accurately. 
What do you think keeps, whether it's an athlete or just somebody who really is pushing those edges of performance from really seeking to maximize their potential? Where is that gap? So it's the understanding of allowance. Uh, so you, what we do is we corrode our connection to that which inspires us. So let me give you an example where the confusion comes from. In the pragmatic realm, in the lower vibration, there's one currency, and that currency is money, right? There, there's a That money could be gold, diamonds, dollars, yen, d- doesn't matter, but there is... In, People don't look at currency and understand it. Currency is a, a current is an energy. A currency is an object, an energetic object that is put into a flow of energy. So in the realm of that we live in, it's very obvious that if I put a hundred dollars in energy, a currency, into the flow and go to a cash register, someone's gonna manifest or I'm gonna allow, you know, a hundred dollar object to be given back to me. Sure. What athletes, celebrities, uh CEOs, wonderful mothers out there that that I especially think have empowered more people than you know. Behind every great athlete, every great is almost inevitably a very powerful woman. <laughs> in some respect, sometimes a man, but more commonly, mom, grandma, aunt, grand. You know, it, it's out there. Teachers. It, it's it's an irony that they don't get enough respect. Uh, but moreover, the real currency in life to clean that connection is faith. And understanding faith is that aggregate of what they think, say, do believe in the unconscious competencies, which I talked about previously. And so faith is a currency. Faith is actually an object in which we put through a current that flows to that which inspires us. But instead of having to go to the mall or the store, I believe there's a field field or a store of intention. And it holds everything for everyone. So what limits us? Number one, we don't dream big enough. We don't believe big enough. When I was five years old, I believed that I was going to be a millionaire. And all I needed was a million dollars to buy my mom a house, a car, and never have to work again. That was my dream. Now, if I dream that big today, I'm going to jump out a window, bro. I mean, if, if uh, you know, even for me, if I dream about making a billion dollars, you know, uh, Bezos makes a billion dollars this year. He's fired. Right. So what what I find in the people that expand, accelerate, and grow the most is the ability to know what they want and dream big, to clean and constantly and consistently and persistently clean the connection to that which inspires them so they can be more productive and accessible, accessible to others and access what they want, uh, and be able to literally manifest in the field of intention exactly what they want and continue to expand and accelerate so that time is taken out of the equation. They bend time. What do you mean by that? So here's the problem with time is that it's a blip of, of a moment. You, when, you're, when you're alive, one of the most crucial decisions you have to make that has never been proven is, is this only it? Meaning, am I going to die and that's it? Or is time eternal, right? Is, it, is time forever for me? Now, I can't prove anything, and neither can the smartest minds in the world. Only thing I can prove about that choice for me is that you're better off believing that you're going to live forever than that this is it. So I believe that, that time creates so much resistance, shortages, voids, and scarcity because people say, I need to make a million dollars by the end of the year. The universe doesn't know dollars and it doesn't know time. I want to double the amount of currency that I receive as quickly as I can. I want to triple the amount of currency that I see as quick as I can. The minute I tell someone, watch this, even you, right? Hey, man, we only have uh, 20 minutes left on this show. Hmm. I've just created resistance voids and an energy that bugged you. (laughs) And it probably (laughs) bugged the audience. I don't do that, right? Because... My lifetime is a blip of time. This embodiment, a week, a year, a month, 10 years is a blip of time. So I release that and I focus in on the present, meaning I'm going to be as productive and accessible with my time. The 24 hours of activity, the man-made construct of time, there's 24 hours of activity. Now, if I want to be as productive and accessible, I want to, what, number one, in that time, see what activity I get paid for and what activity I don't get paid for. What activity I help people with, what activity I don't help people with. What activity makes me more accessible, meaning to other people, and 
I also see sleep, the activity of sleep. Right? I study it. I, I, I focus in on sleep as much as my awakeness because subconscious and unconscious take over when I'm sleeping. So there's a balance here, and, and maybe it's not attention, but it seems like a really interesting place to play where when we are, especially in the world of sports, we become so outcome driven, right? We become very, very focused on, okay, whether it's a seasonal goal, whether it's a, an individual statistical goal, whatever it may be. So how do you coach the athletes you work with, the coaches that you work with to, to really walk that line of being committed to the openness of allowing it to unfold and also still saying we want to drive towards a particular goal? It's so wonderful. Everyone should have goals. They should have vision boards. They should have reasons, impacts, and capabilities and emotions tied to those visions that they have. And they should put them all over their Facebook and all over their their bed and everywhere. The thing that they don't learn is one word. And it'll change your life, man. Ready? Minimum. Minimum. Let, Let me explain. There's two things I do. I lower the bar and I reach for minimums. So I want to win a minimum of one Super Bowl. Okay? I want to win a minimum of one Super Bowl. That has no resistance. What happens if I I say I want to win a Super Bowl? I've created a a limitation. I've created a limitation. Anytime you limit yourself, and people think goals, you know, are are reach reaching. I believe every goal, you can't think as big as God, you can't think as big as the universe. We cannot fathom infinity. Okay, we cannot fathom the infinity of time, space, and amounts. So what happens is if we don't use the word minimum. We're limiting ourselves. So all I do in coaching is remind people, yeah, you have those goals, bro. Whatever you think is going to manifest happiness and fulfillment and purpose and passion into your life and pursuit, you do it, but make it a minimum, right? I want a minimum of one MVP. I want a minimum of running a 4-4. I want a minimum of getting straight A's. I want a minimum, right? That's a minimum. Once you do that, you release yourself from resistance. Okay, so there's this idea of cleaning the connection to what inspires you. And what I think we we sometimes get confused by, and because you're you've been so deeply embedded in the highest levels of sport, it seems like to the outside world, right? As athletes, we get pulled into inspiration of the sport, right? We connect to this feeling, this love of competing, of playing. And somewhere along the way, that connection fries, it gets clouded, it gets confusing. We might lose touch with that original sense. What in your experience has been kind of, what are the pieces that cloud that connection, especially for athletes and what helps us reconnect to it? So people have a total misconception. Every human being has told me, I want to do what I love, Mm -hmm. right? I want to do what I love. Well, the truth is we don't do what we love. We love what we do. And the process in which we fall in love with sports is because we did certain things to fall in love and connect to that which inspires us. And we make it relative to sports, right? Why? Why? I'll tell you why people love sports, because it's a connection. It reminds us that we're all one. It allows us to be inspired. It allows us to live. And you can do that doing, I can do it doing, uh, taking out the trash. Right. I used to tell people, man, I want to do what I love. The truth is, I've never done what I love. I love what I do. You know, people, I love what I do. And I, it's a different mindset. And what is love? Right. I, I've learned to look within with enthusiasm, theos, the God within me. And that's where I find love. Right. And I am love. And therefore, what I do will be love. And therefore, those around me will be inspired by what I do. You know, I will honestly tell you, I thought the only way I could do what I love was to be a professional football player. I chose the college I went to because they would let me play, not just sit on the bench. They let me play football. And what lesson did I learn that was so valuable is it didn't have to be football. It didn't have to be football. It could be selling legal research online. It could be raising money on the the Silicon Valley and Sand Hill Road. It could be running a phone company. It could be being an angel investor. It could be doing a podcast, a TV show, running the most notable sports agency in sports. All of those things people do and they hate it. Mm. The difference is they hate it. The difference is I love what I do. I don't do what I love. Nobody in the world can love selling legal research online. But I, I did what I love, right? I made it as if the consistent, persistent. Some of it I did subconsciously and unconsciously. Now what I've been able to do, I love when you ask me, hey, when you tell these guys these simple things, like I tell you know, some of the greatest athletes that you know, 
right? I told one of them, changed his life, CJ Anderson, when he was kind of giving us a, dude, you don't got to play football. You get to play football. Right. Imagine if you get to do everything in your life that you are have a strong enough discipline of your perspective that everything in your life you get to do that you have such gratitude in your life that you're like, oh, my gosh, I get to eat mush today. Oh, my gosh, I get to go work 12 hours and shovel shit with my hands today. I am so blessed. That's all it is. Same as playing football. And it, it will just expand and accelerate your whole life. It's incredible because as you say that, I feel my entire body just relax and shift. And it's such a, a beautiful energy. What So this topic of love, Dave, has come up in a lot of conversations. And I'm curious what your relationship is to self-love and how you approach maybe that topic and also how that manifests in your life. It's faith, right? I am love. That's what I work for. I can't have what I do. I can't give what I don't have. I can't give what I don't have. And if I want love, then I have to be love, right? If I want forgiveness, I have to be forgiveness. And all of these things start in theos, right? It starts within. And so there's a great story by Wayne Dyer that I love about a guy who drops his keys inside all, all the electricity's off in his house. So he's looking for the keys. He can't find it. He looks outside and the street light's on. So he goes outside and he starts looking for his keys under the street light. The neighbor comes over and goes, what's you doing? So I'm looking for my keys. He goes, where'd you drop them? I'll help you. He said, back in the house. Why are you looking out here? That's what people do. They're not looking within. They're looking outside for love, right? They're looking outside in the light for love because they can see out there instead of looking for where it should exist. Once you are love, People will love you and you can give love. I love that. Okay, so the backdrop of our conversation is the upcoming Future of Sport conference in July. And so the uh, I'll ask this as kind of my second to last question, and that is, Dave, as you look out into the future, what is the future of sport? I think people are coming to the minute of what the components take up as sports that make us feel good. So the fastest growing sport in the world is esports. So is playing video games really a sport? It becomes a sport when people want to watch you and you can compete, And right? It's not that hard to figure out what it is. So the future of sports is to connect more people with a variety of activity that some people can become professional, get paid at that activity. But what does sport do more than anything proven by the Olympics? It connects us to each other and to that which inspires us. That's why we love sport. So I think the future of sport is recognizing more activities in which will connect us to that which inspires us. That simple. And we're going to monetize it because that's what I love to do at this realm. At this, Make a lot of money from sport, help a lot of people from sport, and especially have a lot of fun, feel good emotionally feel good, connect to others and that which inspires us through sports. Mm -hmm. Dave, this has been absolutely incredible. Where where can these guys go if they want to connect with you online? Sure. Uh, Instagram is at David Meltzer. YouTube, David Meltzer. LinkedIn, David Meltzer. Make sure it's M-E-L-T-Z-E-R. And I have a website in case you get lost, dmeltzer.com. First initial, last name. Uh, Thank you so, so much, man. I can't wait for your conference. Everyone, come see me there. I will fire it up and give you a new enlightenment and understanding of what we do and change and help change other people to empower them, to empower others to be happy. That's my main goal. Dave, thank you for being on the show. This has been absolutely incredible. Guys, go check out the work that Dave is doing, the content he's putting out, everything that he brings to the world, especially through the context of sport, is about raising your vibration, raising your vibration through connecting, through energize and That is what we're here to do at this conference and through Omni Athlete. So thank you for watching this episode of Omni Athlete. Truth vibrates the fastest. Only can be aware of that which vibrates equal to and less than you. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Thank you so much, man. Hey, hey, what is up, guys? Thank you for watching another episode of Omni Athlete. Please, please, please go like and subscribe to our podcast. That is our goal right now is just to build this community as big as we possibly can. And we need your help to do it. So like and subscribe, share our content. Guys, if if this content adds any value to your world that helps you perform, connect, go deeper, go wider, whatever it is that it does for you, if it provides value, all we ask is that you share our content and help grow this community. We can't accomplish our goal of elevating global consciousness through sport without you. You are an integral part 
of this mission and this purpose and we need your help. So please go like, subscribe and share our content and continue to help us build and grow this community that is truly motivated to not just elevate consciousness, but elevate and shift the very culture of sport so that we can truly experience the athletic experience in a brand new and energizing way for so, so many people, guys. So thank you and please like and subscribe until next time.